Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for the National Housing Trust Home Awakes, where we'll be exploring how members of the diaspora, those Jamaicans who reside overseas, can start their journey toward owning their own home right here in Jamaica. This year has been unique in so many ways and in light of this pandemic, we've had to change the way in which we operate in our daily lives. What hasn't changed, however, is the NHT's commitment to serving you through conversations such as this one. The truth is, pandemic or not, housing still a key. And who better to partner with you on this journey of home ownership than the NHT? Because as usual, we're always a key to your home. One of the very first steps though to this journey is contributing to the NHT. And the good news is you can do it from wherever you are in the world. So if you're tuned in from right here at Yard or you're viewing from overseas and would like just a bit more information, go ahead and complete our contact card, which is in our description box below. If you're watching on Facebook, however, click on the link in our caption. And if you're watching from Instagram, then go ahead and click the link in our bio. I'm Daniel Edwards, Corporate and Public Affairs Coordinator at the NHT. And with me today, the gentleman who is just a repository of information regarding the NHT's contribution process. He's Mr. Damien McNally, our Assistant General Manager for Compliance Department. And he'll be exploring just how the NHT can assist you to transform your home ownership dreams from goal to reality, regardless of where you are in the world. And so the first thing I want to jump into with you, Damian, you know, we call persons who contribute from overseas voluntary contributors. And so I just want you to break down for me, who is a voluntary contributor? Why do we term them voluntary contributors? All right, Damian, thank you very much for having me. A voluntary contributor is someone who is not required by law to contribute to the National Housing Trust mm -hmm. and who makes an application to contribute to the NHT and obtains approval for contributing to the National Housing Trust. So as long as you just stop right there, so you said not required by law. So you're saying that once you are within the jurisdiction of Jamaica, then mm. you are required by law, you're mandated to contribute right. to so the Right. So if you are a resident of Jamaica mm -hmm. or you are a resident of another jurisdiction earning an income in Jamaica, right. you are required to contribute to the National Housing Trust. However, if mm -hmm. you are a resident of another jurisdiction, even a citizen of Jamaica, which there are so many of us in the diaspora who are citizens of Jamaica, but we reside elsewhere. Right. Once it is that you are not ordinarily resident in Jamaica, then there's not a requirement by law for you to contribute mm -hmm. to the National Housing Trust. And these persons are primarily, as you have stated, persons in the diaspora. A lot of Jamaicans are now living overseas. Um, even if it is that they have dual citizenship, they are still citizens of Jamaica, but they are not ordinarily resident in Jamaica. Those persons can make an application to the National Housing Trust to contribute as a voluntary contributor. Um, and for the purpose of this engagement, we are going to categorize these persons as overseas voluntary because there is still a subcategory of persons in Jamaica who are not required by law to contribute to those persons, we refer to them as local voluntary oh, contributors. So yeah, overseas voluntary contributor and local voluntary contributor. That's correct. Okay. There must be some kind of paperwork, mm -hmm. you know, must be some kind of, you know, how then, what's the process for them to start the contribution? All right. I'm happy mm -hmm. that you asked that question right. because over the years we have simplified that process. Right now, the application form for overseas and local right. voluntary contributors is a one-page document. So what was it before? That? Well, it was, it was what per, some persons consider a more complex process where it is that you had a three or four-page mm -hmm. document, um, you know, requesting some information. But for us right now, we just need sufficient information right. to create an account for you. So the basic information is required is your name, Right here, you must have a TRN attack, a TRN tax registration mm -hmm. number, a national insurance number that we call the NIS, mm -hmm. name TRN NIS. All right, and we ask for you to state what is your proposed income. Right. Right. For your overseas voluntary, you must show some proof that it is that you are a resident of another jurisdiction. Okay. Right. Having submitted all that information. We'll, we'll then ask mm -hmm. you for copies of the documentation required, and you can submit that to us electronically. 
you can just complete the application form, scan it, along with the required documents and your senator oh, complaints that again, mailbox. Because I think, you know, persons who have left Jamaica years ago thinks that, think that, they, you know, they, leave, they left the same institution that they left in 95, 96. Right. I would keep telling people that we're not only a listening organization, right. but we evolve with the times. That's so correct. go through that again, because persons believe that they have to physically bring the documents in. So you can go through that again for me. They may All right. Scan it. I tell you what. Um, like a lot of us can mm -hmm. identify and agree with, um, the pandemic has taught us to do business a different way. Yes. So to at NHG, we have pivoted, right? And we have listened and we have tried to make the process as simple as possible. So the application form is a one page document that can be found on our website. Right. Simple, so simple information, name, address, your NIS, your TRN, your proposed income, and you send us a copy of your ID, proof of residency, along with a copy of your TRN and NIS. And you can submit that to us electronically. Currently, the requirement is that you complete the application form, have it notarized if it is that you're not coming in person. And we mm -hmm. recommend that you submit electronically. Right. right? We are now migrating to all putting all our processes online. Right. And so having printed all these documents, you have them notarized. You can have them scanned and email to us and we recommend them that you send them to our compliance mailbox mm -hmm. with the address is compliance at nht.gov.jm and within two working days we'll have your account created and tell you how it is that you can go about making your first payment online online so in two tools you're finished so two tools. what you're telling me is that regardless of where you are in the world i keep hearing you know when i was younger i heard about timbuktu i i, I later found out it was a real place I, <laughs> I later found out that timbuktu was a real place so if you are in timbuktu mm -hmm. if you are in antarctica yes. or if you are in the arctic circle yes. if you are as far as australia yes. if you are as far as well i don't know what connectivity you'll achieve in space but I see people going, you know, once you have connectivity, once you, have connectivity That's correct. you can send in your documentation and you can make the payment online. Online. We just need to create the account. Having created the account, we'll mm -hmm. give you your account number. Right. And then it is that you can create an online platform, again, using our NHT platform, which is mm -hmm. our website, right, to create that account and you make your first payment. And so one of the things that, you know, uh, we have seen over the years where persons in the diaspora have complained, especially when it comes to loan qualification, is that they have missed some of their payments because they have entrusted someone to make that payment for them right. and the person did not make the payment on time. Now we are taking out the third person as best as possible out of the picture. Once you create that account, you can manage your affairs on I your own. I love that because right. you can, it, it creates a level of transparency, Precisely. I think, because you know that this was done instead of sending it to your cousin and your cousin on the way to make the payment, remember that you need to buy something and then stops and makes the purchase. You don't have to go through that. Precisely. You can make the payment yourself. Right, that's I correct. I love that. So you see, wherever you are, whoever you are, mm -hmm. and you want to contribute to the trust, it's really simple. Two tools. It's a five-minute application. I've seen application for It's five minutes. Anybody that has completed it can tell you literally in 10 minutes, less than 10, five minutes, you're done. Sign, sealed, everything is completed, and you can make that payment online. So it gives you a sense of peace and security, knowing that that transaction and our website is secure. Or online platform is that secure. is correct very very secure so it gives you a sense of peace and security knowing that your payment comes directly to the nhd but damien you just touched on the um application form i want to ask you uh, is there any other required documentation we said trn nis application form is there any other proof of residency proof of residence right. mm -hmm. proof of residency i mean it can be a copy of your passport mm -hmm birth certificate mm -hmm. or whatever it is that it is that you have to prove to have to show as proof of residency in which country or jurisdiction you are okay. because it is important for us to make that distinction that there is not a requirement by law for you to contribute having provided that verification okay. we can now say that you know there is no there's not a requirement by law however upon you submitting an application you can obtain approval to contribute voluntarily okay and so I want to ask now, now that we've gone through the documentation, mm -hmm. 
you know i want to also ask you had mentioned that you must declare your income right, right? but when you declare your income how will they know what portion of that income should be paid over to contribution all right um i'm happy again that you mm -hmm. asked that question because we have somewhat modified the requirements in terms of contributing and so you will note on the form that it asks for you to state your proposed income right, right? because you know as best as possible we want to maintain the spirit and intent of voluntary contribution mm -hmm. so whatever you state as your proposed income you contribute three percent of that okay. monthly right and the payments are required to be made by the 14th of the following month so for example for the month of january january contribution payments are due on or before the 14th of february and again it is three percent it's three percent um within the currency in which it is that you earn income uh -huh. and it is converted to jamaican dollars at the exchange rate at the date of payment okay so we have the you know and, and depending on what country you're from right. you know so what if somebody is if so we, we always get the question what do i declare is it my gross or is it my net you know depending on what country you're from that terminology well may well vary. ideally ideally mm -hmm. you ought to be declaring on your gross emoluments right right um, but the term emoluments mm -hmm. can have some element of subjectivity yes. based on where you are and so what we ask for just to state what it is that is your proposed income mm -hmm. but um, in line with our standard overall that should reflect your gross emoluments right but as voluntary contributor we don't get too much behind that veil yes we just state proposed income and you will contribute three percent of that three percent so three percent and your contributions are due for that month the following month right that's, Damian? That's so correct. it's due all right so it's due so your contributions for january mm -hmm. are due by the 14th of february right and so on and so forth right. and that's how it goes but tell me you know we, we give them that deadline but are there any consequences why would we want them to pay you know on time what's the value all right, and importance right. of paying these contributions on time no um contributing to the national housing trust is the gateway to accessing a loan benefit from mm -hmm. the national housing trust but they are really connecting arms but they are separate so we say that at in compliance that for you to contribute on time and be in compliance with the processes that you contribute by the 14th of the following month right now for voluntary contributors there is no arrears position so if the payment is late mm -hmm. right you accumulate no interest for late payment no interest no interest at all mm -hmm. right and if it is that at any point you wish to discontinue making contribution payments you can communicate same to us in writing however mm -hmm. given that contributions payment is the gateway for accessing a loan benefit there are certain requirements to meeting the loan eligibility requirement and one of those major requirements is that those payments are made on time which is by the 14th of the following month right now for persons who have never contributed to the nht mm -hmm. before as a voluntary contribut contributor meaning that um, prior to you making an application you were not required by law to contribute mm -hmm. in jamaica on our system there's no record of you contributing before then you are required to contribute for 104 weeks mm -hmm. that's two years on time right. with, well with the last 12 months payment being on time before you are able to access a loan benefit if it is that it is that you have contribution payments in our system prior to you making an application to contribute mm -hmm. voluntary and those contribution accumulates to 52 weeks then you only need to contribute for 52 more weeks mm -hmm. on time before it is that you meet the loan eligibility requirement and i think that's an important point to know because we always get the question you know i was contributing to the trust mm -hmm. between x time and x time mm -hmm. but i've migrated it's been over 15 years mm -hmm. oh my god mm -hmm. those contributions must be gone it must be missing it must have disappeared. I was like, no, 
once a you've made a contribution, and I think we have to stress that point. Right. Once you've made a contribution to the trust, mm. it is yours. Right. It is going nowhere. That is the meaning of a trust. Mm. That money is held in trust for you when you are ready to you know, access same for financing. That's and so regardless of whether you contributed in 1978 or 2018, right. your contributions are there waiting for you. And you made an important point that if you were residing in Jamaica, right. some persons think that because they've left, they're going to have to restart the process. While right. they will have to apply now mm. because their status has changed, they're going to have to go through the application process. Right. The good thing is, as you said, if we found a year's worth of contribution, or 52 weeks, 52 as you weeks. said, then they just need to contribute just for another 52 weeks right. and not two years or 104 weeks. That is weeks. correct. And we have found that mm -hmm. a lot of persons in the mm -hmm. diaspora would have contribution history. Right. So once it is that we are able to identify and accumulate number of 52 weeks contributions, mm -hmm. then you only need to contribute for another 52 weeks on time right. by the 14th of each month mm -hmm. to make to meet the qualified requirements to so access a loan benefit. That's nice. That nice. I think that's I just think that is just absolutely fabulous. And as you said, there is no interest, there is no interest There's accumulated. No interest. And you can indicate, well, I don't see why somebody would want to you know, seize their contribution relationship with us. Right. But you said anytime they can write and seize that um, relationship. But I don't see why, because there's so much value to be gained from contributing right. just 3% of your income mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. Right. And as I had said prior right. to, if you mm -hmm. want to build it, mm -hmm. buy it or repair it. Mm -hmm. We have a financing mm -hmm. option available for you. What we find is that a lot of or overseas, or a lot of members of, of the diaspora, they wait until they're nearing retirement yes. or until they're much older yeah. to think about, right. you know, settling in Jamaica. What we found is that a lot of persons want to return home, so it's better to start the journey sooner than later. I tell you what, Dania, one mm -hmm. of the things that we have observed is that a lot of persons in the diaspora, it's only when they are here on their vacation mm -hmm. and it strikes them, so whoa, Jamaica is a much more beautiful place than they left it. And at, mm -hmm. at that point, they want to make an investment. And it's that a point of engagement. And additionally, one of the things we have also observed is at the point where it is that they want to make an investment where the NHE is engaged. And we are saying that don't wait until your appointed time. Right. Come in before, start the process. You know, from time to time, a lot of process ask if it's that they can pay up. And we are mm -hmm. saying, no, there's actually a 12 of 12 month or 24 month waiting period where it is that you have to contribute and you cannot make a lump sum payment and meet eligibility requirements. Mm -hmm. So to underscore your point, you start from as early as possible. So it is that you give yourself a lot of option and a lot of time to repay if it is that you intend to access a loan benefit from the National Housing Trust. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we have observed is that persons in a diaspora recognize or sees that this contribution is so small that they tend to forget to make the monthly payments. Yes. And so one of the things that we encourage them, you can make lump sum payments. Mm -hmm. You can make payments every three months or every, you know, every six months or even for the year. If it is that you are able to do so, in that way you would avoid having late payments. And again, late payments impacts your eligibility. And you don't, and you, and you you really don't want, want that. that. So can you imagine two overseas voluntary contributors coming together, combining their purchasing power, getting up to 30 million and what they'd be able to build in, put, put their savings into that because mm -hmm. we do encourage whether you're overseas or whether you're here, you know, there are certain things that you must follow. Start the conversation and we will hear a little bit um, about hiring a competent um, attorney later on but there are certain steps saving is critical apart from contributing saving is critical starting the conversation with us as well as a real estate um, whether it's a broker don't just rely on your family because I think persons in the diaspora have mm. a tendency right. to just rely on their family right. to just activate their home ownership um, right. goals Open and their the journey no 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 hire competent individuals can't stress that enough 
hire competent individuals. It doesn't matter if you know Patrick, your neighbor, and you've seen him mix cement and build two blocks, and you've seen, and you've seen him done that to his house. No, 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 no. Not in this space. Your house is one of the most important investments that you will make. So start saving towards it. Start contributing to the NHT and start having the conversation and do your research. See what the market is like because our market is evolving and it is booming. So Damien, tell me, did you ever see the market expanding or did you foresee the market expanding in the way that's expanding? Not at all. Now? It has grown leaps and bounds. And again, to underscore what you have said mm -hmm. earlier, we encourage our persons in the diaspora of volunteer contributors to ensure that it is that you ensure that your payments are made on time so you can take advantage of all the offerings that we are seeing island wide. The, the construction industry is growing exponentially, and I'm sure a lot of person that the diaspora would want their piece of the rock. Right. And so we encourage them to start the process as early as possible. But I want to touch on refunds though, because you know, once January comes around, it's refund season. Mm -hmm. Tell me, can these individuals access? NHG refunds. That is correct. All contributors, self-employed, mm -hmm. employees, volunteer, which is both local and overseas volunteer, can access their contributions refund, even if it is that you have not accessed your benefit. And one of the questions that I've heard from time to time, does accessing a refund affect my ability to access a loan? And the answer is no. You can access your refund Contributions are refunded after seven years and paid at the beginning of the start of the eighth year. So, for example, we are now in 2022 mm -hmm. and we are refunding contributions for 2014. Come next year, we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be refunding contributions for 2015. So, again, to answer your questions directly, all voluntary contributors can access a refund like all other categories of contributors that can access refund as well. But if you can access a refund, mm -hmm. you have access to financing, I don't see why anybody would not want to either restart or mm -hmm. initiate right. their contributions mm -hmm. or their, their relationship with the NHG. It's a win-win situation. It's a win-win. Right. Like I've always said, NHG is one of those few places where it is mm -hmm. that you can eat your cake and still have it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can eat a cake and have a cake. Right. You can make your contributions mm -hmm. payments. You can access a refund of those contributions. And you can still access a loan benefit. Thank you, Damien. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Everything you need to know about becoming an NHT contributor, as well as those key things to note when investing in property in Jamaica. Do the required research and take the necessary steps to prepare. And before you know it, you'll be turning your very own set of keys. For more information on the registration process, you can contact Damien and his team by email at compliance at nht.gov.jm or give us a call at 876-929-6500. Keep the conversation going with your family and friends and share this information with them. You can also follow the NHG on all social media platforms. And that's it for us. Remember, whoever you are and wherever you are, home awaits.